In this video, we're going to look at a couple of review topics for the AP exam as well as uh, talk a little more about logistic equations. So first, uh, this first integral, you'll notice, of course, I hope, that substitution won't work because if u is x squared minus 5, then we don't have du. So we go to partial fractions. So I'm going to do some factoring here. Uh, x squared minus 5x minus 6 would factor to be uh, x minus 6 x plus 1. So we've got a over x minus 6 plus b over x plus 1. We find the common denominator, so a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 6 equals just the numerator, which was 1, because it was 1 dx. So if I make x negative 1, to cancel out that first thing, I got negative 7b equals 1. Oops. Equals 1. So b is negative 1 seventh. I'm just going to write that right there. If x were 6, then 7a would be 1. So a is 1 seventh. So I can rewrite this integral as 1 seventh over x minus 6 dx plus the integral of negative 1 seventh over x plus 1 dx. And that integral should be pretty easy. It's uh, right, right up here. 1 seventh, the natural log of x minus 6. Oops. And minus 1 seventh natural log x plus 1. Like that. Okay. Now, solve the initial value problem given the derivative is xy squared. Okay, so we need a y equals. Sometimes this is said on the AP exam, you know, find the um, particular solution. But we want to get a y equals equation. And since it's a y here and over here, the only way to do that is by doing a separable differential equation. So dy dx equals x y squared. I start by multiplying both sides by dx. So the x's are now together. Then I divide both sides by y squared. So the y's are together. Now 1 over y squared, uh, I'm going to write as y to the negative second. So we separate, then we integrate. The antiderivative is 1 half x squared plus c. Here we got negative y to the negative first. Okay. So another way to write negative y to the negative first is negative 1 over y. And at this point, because the constant appears, you could solve right away for the constant. Maybe let's do that. Let's plug in 1 for y. So we have negative 1 over 1 equals uh, 1 half times 1 squared plus c. So we've got negative 1 equals 1 half plus a constant. So the constant, little arrow here, the constant is negative 3 halves. Okay. So negative 1 over y is equal to 1 half x squared minus 3 halves. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. I'm trying to solve for y equals now. So multiply by negative 1. I have uh, 1 over y equals negative 1 half x squared plus 3 halves. Let me do one more thing before I, I finish. Uh, because I have a common denominator, I'm going to write negative x squared plus 3 all over 2. And then, because I want a y equals, I am going to flip this to be y over 1, and then I simply do the same thing to the other side. And there is my y equals. Okay, let's look at a couple more things. 
So here the number of students infected by measles in a certain school is given by the formula below. You'll see it is a logistic problem. Um, remember that we've got a carrying capacity here. Okay. So P of 0, uh, P of 0, we'd just plug in 0. We'd have 200 over 1 plus e to the 5.3. You could type that in. And this is how many are infected at time zero. So at time zero, how many had it? How many were infected? Now the limit as t goes to infinity, um, well, this is the carrying capacity. Okay, I'm just going to write c, c below it. And so it's, it is 200. It's that numerator. Uh, and what that means is that as time goes on, that will get closer and closer to that value. This is the this is the limit, um, you know, and that it, we shouldn't pass that in terms of the number of people getting the measles. All right, the population of whales in calculus is seriously amazing. Stan can be modeled by a differential equation given like that. Now, I put that this differential equation here because it's a little bit different looking than others, and I, I always like to have it in kind of the same form, which is uh, some constant times the uh, variable and then the carrying capacity minus that variable. It doesn't always have to be that way, and a lot of times it's not, but I would like to have it that way because then it's really easy to see the carrying capacity. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Do a little algebra on this. I'm going to write 245 minus y over 245. So I get a little um, a common denominator there. And then I'm going to factor the 245 out. Now it was in the denominator, so I'm going to pull that out. So what I have now, and I'm, I'm not going to do a whole lot of simplifying on it yet, is I've got 0.3 over 245 y times 245 minus y. And this then, this front value serves as k, and this value serves as m. So you read the question here, it says, assuming that you start at 35, find the number of whales at time 35 and the limit. Well, I already know the limit. The limit's the carrying capacity, so that's 245 whales. Okay. Now, to find the number of whales, I will need the equation. Now, if you'll remember, the equation for logistic is carrying capacity over 1 plus some constant e to the negative m k t. Okay, now, I have a video of the proof of that. You're free to look for it uh, or go back and look at that. But uh, I'm just going to go straight to the formula and kind of plug things in. So... I have a carrying capacity of 245. I've got 1 plus some constant, and then E. Now, M and K, if I multiply 245 times 0 0.3 over 245, I just get 0 0.3. So it's going to be negative 0.3 T. Now, it tells me that at time 0, I should get an answer of 35. So if I plug in 0, let me just solve for that constant. If I plug in 0, I'd have 245 over 1 plus c, and I would get 35. Through a little algebra, I can then say that 1 plus c must be 7, so the constant is 6. So my equation is y equals 245, 1 plus 6, e to the negative 0.3t. So if I wanted to know how many were there at time 5, uh, I would just plug 5 in for t. Again, there's a, there's a whole proof of why that works. I did that in another video. In the interest of time, I didn't want to recreate that whole, uh, um, you know, doing the antiderivative to get back to this. But certainly it's a separable differential equation, and then you use partial fractions, but it's a lot of work. You can go back and look that up. Finally, uh, a little bit more here of uh, kind of the same idea that we can do a little bit of algebra and get it to a nice form that we're used to. So the form I always like, remember, is
So the first thing I might do here is factor a y out. And I have 6 minus 0.24y. Well, now if I factor a 0.24 out, I have 25 minus y. And you'll see this is very much in the form that I like it. Okay, so the carrying capacity now is very easy to spot. It's 25. The value of k is very easy. That's 0.24. The value of y, the population, when it's growing most rapidly. Well, remember from a logistic curve, we talked about the first day, it looks like that. Its most rapid growth is at an, its inflection point, and this is halfway to the carrying capacity. So for us, that would be 12.5. And the logistic growth model, we looked at on the previous slide, remember it's m over 1 plus uh, C E to the negative M K T. So we can easily create that. 25 over 1 plus a constant E uh, to the negative M K. So 0.24 times 25 is negative 6 T. Like that. And we can solve for the constant, remember, by plugging in 0 and setting it equal to 2. So 25 over 1 plus C equals 2. So 1 plus C is 12.5. So C is 11.5. So our final equation, uh, because I'm running out of room, I might just um, I might just go back and put that right here. Like that 11.5.